Uh, I am Harman here, and today me and Sufyan are going to represent the paper self training mm -hmm. with noisy students into ImageNet classification. The author of these papers are Zizi, Min Thank Lu, Edward Hovi, Quitvi, Ali. And these are the authors from the Google uh, Brain Dream and the uh, Carnegie Mellon University. So these are the contents that we are going to cover uh, today in the slides. So first is an introduction. So generally, the still the uh, vision models that we use today are still trained on the supervised learning by using the supervised learning approach, which required a large uh, amount of uh, labeled images. But in this paper, the author has proposed uh, uh, a new approach, new, a noisy student approach, which use the unlabeled images that are present in an abundant amount. So this approach is based on a semi-supervised learning approach, and it is an extension of the method self-training and knowledge distillation. The unlabeled images that have has been used in this approach are mostly the out of distribution images, or we can say the large fraction of the images are the out of distribution and the small fraction of the images are the in distribution. By the use of this approach, the accuracy and the robustness of the ImageNet model is improved. So for first understanding this approach, we have to first understand what exactly is a knowledge distillation. So knowledge distillation is a process of transferring a knowledge from the large network to a small network, or we can say it is a way to compress a large model into a small model. So in this uh, approach, the large model is called as a teacher model and the small model is called as a student model. The teacher model is a pre-trained model and we train the student model with the help of the teacher model. So the teacher model is trained on a large uh, amount of a data so that it can produce a better predictions. And we will try to uh, train the student model with the help of a teacher model to generate the same, um, the same kind of a results. So in this process, in this process, only the, uh, if any back, uh, back propagation will happen, it will happen only in the student model. So in the last layer, there are softmax functions. So in this process, the teacher model and the student model both will first produce the soft uh, labels, or we can say the soft predictions. And the first loss function, which is a distillation loss, which try to minimize the difference between the soft prediction that is produced by the student model and that is produced uh, by the teacher model. And for the same logics, the student model will produce the hard predictions. So in this uh, second loss function, uh, it will try to minimize the difference between the hard prediction that are produced by the student model and the uh, hard uh, labels that are ground truth values. So the total loss is a combination of the distance, uh, distillation loss and the student loss. So in this, uh, the knowledge transfer process, like we uh, transfer the knowledge from the large model to a small model, the soft prediction has a major important role. So that is going to, I'm going to explain in the next slide. So these soft predictions we generate by using the softmax function. So as you can see, there is an equation for a softmax function. So in the softmax function, when we use it with the temperature T, and when we use the value of the T that is greater than one, we get the soft labels. For T equal to one, we get the uh, standard softmax function and we get the hard labels. So what exactly is the difference between the hard label and the soft label that I'm going to explain? In the, as you can see in the example, the hard labels uh, will only tell us about the target of a particular class. So here we can see like it only tells about that the target belongs to the dog class. But in the soft labels, we get the uh, softer probability distributions of a class probabilities. So we here, uh, as you can see, like the target class belongs to the dog class because it has a higher probability. But it also tells that it uh, that class is more similar to the cat class as compared to the cow class or the car class. 
so the soft labels will provide us a more information so in, in the knowledge distillation process we use the soft labels to train a student model from the teacher model so next is a self training and a distillation method so the classical self training and a distillation method consists of a three main steps first is to train a teacher model on a labeled images then we use that teacher model to generate the pseudo labels on unlabeled images and after that we take the top scoring examples from that unlabeled data set which uh, which have uh, uh, the value above some threshold and then we use that data set and also the labeled data set and train the student model and after that we make that student model as a teacher and repeat this whole process until we have uh, done all the iterations or the converge, uh, convergence is reached so this is the classical self training and distillation method so noisy student approach is an extension of that method so what they have done is first they have introduced the noise to the student model so three types of noise they have introduced in the student model data augmentation dropout and stochastic depth and the second thing they have done is they have made the student model larger than the teacher model uh, it will be either larger than or equal to the teacher model whereas in the classical self training method the student model is always a uh, smaller or equal to the uh, teacher model so that is the only difference in the self training distillation method and the noisy student method so this is the algorithm that has been explained in the paper for the noisy student training so the requirement is the labeled images and the unlabeled images first we train the teacher model which minimize the cross entropy loss on the labeled images and then we use the unnoisy teacher model to generate the soft or the hard pseudo labels for the unlabeled images after that we train the student model which is either equal to or larger than the teacher model and it minimizes the cross entropy loss on the labeled images and also on the unlabeled images and this student model is a noisy one after that we made that student as a teacher and go back to the step checking and repeat this uh, process until we reach uh, the convergence or the we have done all the iterations so this is the process of the new uh, noisy student training so in this uh, noisy student method the uh, important part is the noise that has been added to the students so they have added uh, one is the data augmentation so they are using the rent uh, augment data augmentation to augment the images and their goal is that the student model should produce the same output for the original images and the tempered images and then they are adding the dropout and the stochastic depth uh, noise to the model so that they want the student model to behave like an uh, uh, ensemble models so as we know like in the dropout we drop uh, some neurons while training and in the stochastic depth noise we drop the layers so each time when the student model is um, trained it will get a different kind of a network so in the end it will behave like a powerful ensemble model so while training they have also taken care of the data balancing in the image net model uh, the uh, each of the class has almost uh, each of the class is balanced and uh, when we are using the uh, this unlabeled data so the authors try to maintain that balance in every class so what they are doing if uh, if the any class has a less number of images then they are duplicating the images in that class or they are um, if any class has a large number of images they are moving the images according to some confidence value so no uh, till now if anybody has any questions so the next part uh, will be okay so yeah uh, i will share the slide first um, Okay, perfect. So, can you see my screen? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, my name is Sufian. I will continue um, like what uh, Harman described before. So, 
so yeah, about the uh, pseudo labels, uh, Harman described uh, at the beginning uh, about described the, the, the this soft uh, distribution, which the it's uh, continuous distribution. In this plot here, the uh, they want to to show like uh, how this continuous distribution is uh, is is better uh, than the one hat encoding when the, the the we have a low soft uh, distribution like for example here we notice that uh, the accuracy this is like the teacher models the, the accuracy of the teacher model uh, when we have uh, low soft uh, values the the, the the accuracy is better with our model, which is the with uh, with the soft uh, pseudo labels. Um, uh, they create this plot by uh, sampling 1.3 million images in each in each uh, confidence interval. And yeah, that's the result uh, about comparing the, the these two distributions: the, the continuous one and the the, the one hat encoding one. Um, yeah, about the architecture of the model. Um, so we have uh, a scale up of uh, the model. Uh, this, they use the, the efficient net, which uh, is a um, basic model, but they scaling up at each iteration. So we have different size of models here. Uh, so, uh, the, the architecture of the, the teacher model and the student model may be the same or, or different. Uh, the student model needs to be bigger enough, as we can see in this uh, schema, uh, to be able to fully express the labels and the pseudo labels, in fact. So, uh, some information about that efficient net uh, model it's bigger than the ResNet one. and um, if we use this efficient net model, it makes the student model larger than the, the, than the teacher model. So uh, yeah, that was about the architecture. So about the results. So this paper, like uh, the best result is, it's, it's, it was 87.4% uh, as a, for, for the accuracy. And it's better than uh, the previous uh, reported efficient net model which was uh, just about uh, 85%. So we have about 0.5% uh, uh, increase in, with scaling up uh, the model and like uh, increasing of 1.9% uh, with adding this noise. Uh, this is comparing with just the reported efficient net. And uh, if we compare it with the, the state of art, like the, some other models, uh, the best uh, was like 86.4%. And this model, they use uh, 35 billion Instagram uh, tagged images, 3 billion uh, unlabeled images. Uh, so that's a huge uh, data to collect. So yeah, that's about the, the, like the main results. Uh, what else? So yeah. That's uh, the table of uh, the accuracy of the, the, the top one and the top five accuracy of the noisy student uh, train model and the previous uh, state of art method. So all the method, the ResNet, the Inception, like, and the, the, the basic models. So, and here the, also they reported the, the number of the parameters, for example, oh, sorry. So for example, for the, that model, uh, the noisy student one, uh, they, they, it, have, it has just uh, 480 million. So, and uh, 3 million uh, enlabeled uh, image. So yeah, and the accuracy, as I reported before, it was 88.4%. Uh, uh, and the, for the top five, it's, quite huge, it is uh, 98.7. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so this, this, this uh, plot is about the, the size of the model, uh, that scaling up uh, uh, thing. So 
the noisy student training for efficient net starting from uh, b0 to b7 without uh, the iterative training just with uh, just one uh, training um, we noticed that this our model uh, the, the model that they present which is the noisy student uh, training leads to a significant improvement across uh, all the, the, the other models like uh, with uh, a 0 0.8 uh, increase here, comparing to the efficient net without uh, noisy, uh, uh, noisy or scaling up uh, thing, and like much much better than the other models. Uh, yes, so uh, that's what I'm telling. Yeah, so uh, another um, uh, thing to evaluate is the robustness of a model. So the authors evaluate the, the best uh, model that achieved that, that uh, 88, 4% uh, uh, as a, the top one accuracy on three robustness test, uh, test sets. So the first uh, test set is the image net A, which is uh, for the adversarial. The, this uh, set uh, consists of difficult images that uh, cause significant uh, drops in accuracy of state of art model so it's kind of the adversarial uh, attacks so some images that are hard to detect uh, image c it's uh, in general it's, it's they add general destruction such as uh, blurring or fogging and the third data set is image net p which is a kind of rotation or scaling so here is some uh, like just the description of those uh, three sets, so this is some adversarial images which are uh, hard to detect and this some blurring images and this is scaling uh, the, the images and this is for rotations, for example. Yeah, and those are the result for uh, these three, three, uh, uh, three data sets. So for the uh, ImageNet A, they evaluated with 83.7% uh, for top one and uh, for uh, uh, image net C 77 and uh, for the image net P 86% uh, and it's always uh, better than this state of like the previous uh, reported uh, models. Uh, yes. So yeah. So as a summary, uh, we did present that the self-training, the student model, which is a simple and a powerful algorithm for handling unlabeled, unlabeled data images. So we get an increased accuracy and the, the robustness of the model, comparing to the previous studies that require uh, uh, for for this model. It, require weekly supervised the learning uh, images and uh, it's obvious that it increased the, the robustness without intentional uh, increase in the data so this is uh, just a general summary on on what we uh, described before yeah so that's it so if uh, you have uh, any question? Uh. Hey, I've got a quick question. So um, you, you mentioned training to convergence. Is convergence some sort of, is it, is it a balance of the two, two separate loss functions for the student and the teacher? Or what did they get into what, what convergence was? Uh, when I mentioned it, the convergence, uh, which slide? Like at the beginning? Uh, yeah, it would have been close to the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, Mentioned, I think. And yeah. if they didn't mention it, fine. Yeah, I'm yeah. just curious. I, I, I have mentioned it. Yeah, it's like when we, uh, like, when we train the model and we reach the, like, uh, in the end, like, we get the output or the loss is less. That is uh, what I meant by the convergence. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that's yeah, there was a slide where, where it. It, it gave, I don't, it wasn't in the formula, but you mentioned there are two separate loss functions, one for the student 
and one from the teacher. And I know you mentioned that it kind of it it's, alternates. So it's, yeah. um, it's in the, I think it's the fourth slide. The fourth slide, this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, that's it. Yep, distillation yeah. and student loss. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other question? Did they provide the implementation online? Uh, it's the implementation, but uh, as I described, these like they use huge data and like million of images, so you cannot reproduce the the, the results. Yeah. But the code, I think it. See, it's available. It's uh, from Google. That, uh, yeah. Uh, any other question? Okay, then uh, Yeah, so I think uh, if you don't have any question, should we stop? Okay, so Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. Thank you.